Welcome back, True Believers. Uh, this week, we'll be talking about music and comic books. Ooh. And we found a couple of songs that are quite surprising to me. I, I We'll get into that in a second, but we're going to be discussing some other things. Uh, well, with me is, of course, always is James. And yes, then I'm always here. Always actually. here. Actually, I have perfect attendance on it's this show. So far, <laughs> I have not. And uh, speaking of perfect attendance and not being here all the perfect, time yeah. is another true believer that we've had on the show before schaefer bonner hey i'm back music and comic books that's uh those are the two things i try to talk to girls about yeah <laughs> so how does that funny. go uh not well <laughs> about as well as this podcast <laughs> so we'll find out oh, oh. oh. oh it's great to be back thanks for having me no <laughs> hey <laughs> And before we get into that, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about where you've been and um, and something that I didn't know that you you've already seen a movie that we're is getting ready to come out this week. Oh yeah, I've got a little preview for you. Um, this week, uh, The World's End coming is coming out, kind of the third big movie with uh, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. I was able to see it a few months early uh, in England, and uh, it's worth waiting for, guys. Very nice. If you uh, if you liked Hot Fuzz or if you like Shaun of the Dead, this is a really good third movie and it's not the same thing rehashed they is actually it? uh they actually some still good solid product but they uh one thing that won't ruin it for you is they kind of roll reverse this time where simon Pegg is actually kind of a, a fuck up and nick frost is the one who has everything together so they try to do something <laughs> new with the characters wow. and they kind of flip-flop that's what i like about them they're always they try not to do the same thing each time because they know yeah. the audience is not stupid yeah so it's not like it's not like uh, it's like not like they're not the same characters all the time. It's not like Stan Laurel and and Oliver Hardy. It's like <laughs> Stan was never like what if what if I'm the the straight man? So, <laughs> but uh, I think it shows that they've got really good uh, really good range in their acting and they they're putting out a good product. What's the name of the director that does Edgar that? Wright. Edgar, Edgar Wright. Wright. Yeah, yeah. he's making a little movie called Ant Man. Yeah. Oh God. Are you excited yeah. for that? I mean, yeah. I, when all when all they all they leaked all the footage of Ant Man the the storyboards. Yeah. I I was excited about that. I think it's gonna be good. Yeah. I never thought I'd be excited for Ant Man. <laughs> no one did. But no one did. You're right. Yeah. yeah if I'm anyone good. can make it work. I I would hope, and this is probably going out on a limb. Maybe not. I would like to see Simon Pegg play that part. I'd like to see him be Ant Man. And I'd like to see you know, Nick Frost play uh, Radioactive Man. And, like, <laughs> let's just do it. You know, yeah. nobody likes that character, so if they don't, I think that's a good team that would, could take yeah. artistic license and make it their yeah, own. Yeah, of course. Like, uh, if you see a good actor and a good director, uh, they can they can take the source material and kind of add their own and make it better. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Robert Downey Jr. with Tony Stark, you know, he added a lot of himself into the character. And I think Simon Pitt could do the same. I, I believe that, and I'm yeah. hopefully... Fingers have crossed. they even said? No, I have not yet. Really? I read that before. I don't know. It's in. on the internet, don't I? <laughs> the internet. We don't have time for you that. Like, you like the internet. <laughs> oh, wait. This is an internet show. Uh, Oops. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, World's End. What is the name of the... There's an actual name for the trilogy. It's based off the ice cream, but I forget what the brand of ice cream... Yeah, there's, I like, a brand of ice cream that's always in the background of those movies. Yeah, yeah. And I can... Cardinet, Yeah, yeah, like corn... Yeah. Well, look it up. Doesn't matter. We'll dub that part in later. It's <laughs> no, we won't. Coordinate. <laughs> Trilogy. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> um, also, you've seen, did you see this in England, the Book of Mormon? Yeah, I was able to see the Book of Mormon, which is on the West End, which is uh, their version of Broadway. Now, let me, ex for those of you who don't know, the Book of Mormon is a Broadway musical by uh, Trey Parker, Matt Stone, the creators of South Park. And um, it won like nine Tonys or something insane, right, in yeah. 2011? Yeah. And so I bought the CD a couple of years ago, <laughs> the soundtrack, and it blew my mind. Like, I still listen to it in the car. I don't think I've ever loved anything as much as I love that, or I haven't in a long time anyway. It's amazing. So you've actually seen it. I just want to point out, James just said anything. Anything. <laughs> yes. Not anyone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually got to see it. At, uh, we're all we're all friends based out of Kansas. And I, I really want it to come a little closer to home so uh, some more people get to see it because uh, music, acting, writing, acting. 
uh, acting again. <laughs> it's just uh, a great writing. amal amalgamation of uh, talent and one of the best things I've ever seen. It's so also it's, it's worth seeing live. It's also uh, one of the most offensive. I mean, if you are in any ways easily offended. You might as well just not even bother, because you'll probably yeah. cry or <laughs> slit your wrist or something. Well, you and I had a, a discussion offline about that, because when I was watching it, it's such a good story, you know, ultimately an uplifting mm -hmm. story. I w was watching it thinking, you know, if this wasn't offensive, like, it could be like a Disney movie. Like, yeah. it's so <laughs> universal. Like, there's such a but universal then, appeal. If it weren't offensive, it would just be... A yeah, Disney movie. it would like compromise. It, yeah, it, it loses something with it. like somehow yeah. they've made an art form out of profanity. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> no, it's it's got a message too. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. got a real message. Yeah, because even with the soundtrack, like I know the story. Like yeah. you can f follow the story just by listening to it, and it's it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> let's check it out. So anyway, let's go with music. Uh, Enrique, you've got the first pick. Well, I've, we were talking about this, you know, some topics, what we could do. And uh, for some reason, like when I was growing up in high school, I, I would stay at home most Saturday nights and I'd watch the Headbangers Ball mm -hmm. with Ricky Rackman. Yeah. And, you know, late at night, they would show really bad headbanger or heavy metal music. And this was one that would pop ever, ever so often. And it was it's, it's the band's called Entombed and it's called Wolverine's Blues. Uh, play a little bit of it, and you know I'll dub some mu it, music in over so you can hear it. But the video on it is pretty. Uh, they've got images of Wolverine. Now, is this Wolverine the comic book character? Yes. Or an actual Wolverine. No. It's about <laughs> I live in a hole and it's kind of wet in Canada. No, no. Here we go. Here you go. Got long hair rocking out. Yeah. Oh. Dude, what's uh, this band called again? Entombed. Man. Yeah. You know what year you think this is? Uh, this has to be like early mid nineties. Yeah. They got some artwork behind them. I don't know. Oh, there's Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's pictures of, bit of graves and. I... <laughs> I was like, I'll give this a chance because you know I, was, I liked Wolverine, and then I was listening to the song. I was like, I can't understand what's going on. He's sad, but he's rocking out. Oh yeah, he's got metal claws. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, those are some special effects. <laughs> How did they get the licensing for all I these images? I wonder there? if it's just one of these things, and I should have done a little bit more research. I couldn't find too much about it. Mm -hmm. But if Marvel let them do this to kind of help get... Yeah, just free oh, Get maybe. the kids. Oh, it's for okay. the kids. Yeah. Because I don't That's know... That's before they were, like, big license. Well, I mean, they are already popular, but they're just, like, help promote. promote Cross-promotion would be a little easier yeah. than it is today. Because I wonder if they went to Marvel and said, hey, we got this song we wrote. Can... An now, artist keep in there. Mind, we don't know anything. We're just <laughs> making this all up. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Could be. No, it, it happened. It happened. <laughs> it happened because I changed the Wikipedia I'm gonna page. See this. Yeah, well, I was going to say that. I was going to see on Wikipedia, like, that'll be one of the notes to, like, reference the <laughs> Believers episode 8. It all started. They were friends with Stan Lee. In, to, in tune, talked to John Caseta and <laughs> said, we have this video. I, I don't know if that's Jim Lee. Wolverine? That, it or, looked like it. I don't know. It looked like Jim Lee. But yeah. I couldn't tell either. I was actually going to ask you. I. It looks like it. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything. I, I, I reckon that's a Jim Lee. I yeah. reckon. Yeah, I it reckon. doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We make up stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was... Uh, and Wolverine. you found one you told me about that I didn't know... Well, uh, there's one that I'm not entirely sure, but I've been making fun of it for so many years that I just got to go with it. It's Megadeth's The Punishment Due. Holy and, Wars. Uh, oh, yeah. Holy off of the Wars. Holy Wars album. Oh, but, um, okay. You're right. I'm sorry. There's, for the most part, I don't think it is about The Punisher, but there's one part in the song where he says, and according to Wikipedia, this is referencing it, and we all know Wikipedia never lies. Hasn't but, uh, yet. There's one part where he says, uh, 
that killed my wife and baby. <laughs> First mistake. Last mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been making fun of that for like 10 years. What's great is like, I uh, I saw Megadeth with Rob Zombie uh -huh. like a while, like two years ago or a year ago or whatever, and uh, I'm not even sure. Like that was the song that I was waiting for, but honestly, I don't know if you played it or not because they all sound the same, <laughs> and it's just like this like hour long uh, shred fest. But uh, and then right after that, Rob Zombie played. I was like, oh, this is what a good band is. <laughs> 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 don't kill me, Dave Mustaine. Well, this yeah. one's got a lot of hair in it, too. A lot of hair. A lot of hair. They've got their shirts off, though. <laughs> Why isn't there more songs about superheroes? I, I don't know. It Probably seemed like because it's lame. <laughs> well, that, but you, I would. I'm, I guess I'm surprised there's not more about Nowadays? Yeah. Well, are there even songs anymore? What do the kids listen to? Schaefer, you're a kid. What do you listen to? Nothing. <laughs> oh, uh, they just listen to their text messages. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I think this this is the breakdown. I don't really know what this song is about. <laughs> well, there's a guy walking in the sand. Yep. Got it. Yo, it fell. He tripped. Eh, oh, fallen. <laughs> Whoa, strobe lights. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is just kind of like... Oh, I'm, wait. It's coming up, I think. Okay. Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I missed the Headbangers Bowl. Why are there people jumping? Uh, uh, Dave Mustaine jumping from a plane. He'd love that. <laughs> See, it goes... Uh, you can look this video up on YouTube. Yeah, you can look it up yourself. But it <laughs> what it is, it goes cuts from a like, wartime video to... To Dave Mustaine skydiving. Yeah. yeah well, then they time. make up video. They shoot their own B-roll of a guy... Uh, in a war and the video stopped video stopped well thanks youtube <laughs> thanks a lot well you get the idea it just kind of goes on and on but there's an even more interesting one yes and this one blew my mind uh there's a song out there it was done in 1975 it's a uh it's a b-side song it was mostly done for shows but they released it as a b-side track it's called Magneto and Titanium Man. And as we all know, Magneto is the X-Men's greatest villain. Yes. Titanium Man is another Iron Man villain. Oh. And here's the kicker. The song is done by Paul McCartney and Wings. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, let that sink in for a minute. Paul McCartney, the guy, you know, the guy behind um, Sergeant Pepper's Abbey, or, or like a Beatle. A Beatle. Yeah. <laughs> wrote a song about Magneto yeah. from X-Men. Pretty weird. weird. Did, yeah. did he write the song? He had to. Yeah, okay. why, why wouldn't he? <laughs> like, but I guess according to, um, according to Wikipedia, and you can go ahead and start playing it if you want. Okay. According to Wikipedia, and God knows they're always right, um, Paul McCartney uh, was a uh, fan of Marvel Comics. And uh, also Crimson Dynamo, who's sort of like Whiplash on Iron Man 2, is also referenced in this song. Um, but uh, Jack Kirby, when it was performed, uh, Jack, Kirby, Jack Kirby, the artist uh, from Marvel, um, drew like this big uh, projection that was on the background oh, during yeah. the concert. Oh, yeah. You can see it in the video. Yeah. And it's, it's got a... Uh, the picture has... Uh, Magneto with Titanium Man and Crimson Dynamo. They're just hanging out. Yeah, it's smoking really smoking some hash. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's it's a really weird song, but I really like it. It's a bouncy tune. Yeah. It's not a bad song at all. I don't I don't get it though. Yeah, he said Crimson Dynamo. 
What an odd collection of villains. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think he's just like, these are my favorite villains from Marvel, and I'm yeah. going to put them all in my song. I still don't. Why not sing a song about Spider Man or uh, Professor X? Yeah. Really, it's cooler that he picked these, like, really weird villains. <laughs> like, if I, Paul McCartney. Like, that's something. I vow to both of you and everyone listening that if I ever get to interview Paul McCartney, my first question will be. Magneto and Titanium in <laughs> WTF. <laughs> Sing it, Paul. So we've went from entombed from Megadeth to Wings. We we did get Paul we McCartney. did make a gradual <laughs> improvement over. <ours. laughs> Actually, I don't know. I take it back. I kind of like that Wolverine song better than Megadeth. Uh, it doesn't have enough shredding. <laughs> yeah, right. Not enough shredding. Hair's or, not long or enough. Or jumping out of planes. But there is. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. I can't remember when. Guitar I that solo. Song. By Magneto. <laughs> yeah. Cerebro. <laughs> Cerebro. Cerebro. I, yeah. We'll post this, and if any of our listeners know of any other songs that they want to share with us about uh, comic books and... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Shut up, is. Megadeth. Uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to invite uh, people to share that they know any of the other like songs. Long and it sucks. Yeah, well, yeah. six minutes of is it a, an intro? Just yeah. shredding. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like seriously, if you guys know any other songs, there's another one that's kind of interesting, um, and we would have to do a lot more research on it. But uh, Marvel in the '70s actually did a rock opera that was released on vinyl, um, and you can buy it on CD. A friend of mine actually bought it on CD. Oh. It is awful. Is that the Spider-Man <laughs> rock opera? Yeah. 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 I heard about that. And what's funny is on on the on the cover of it, like it has different uh, different panels, and it's got like the Fantastic yeah. Four as a band, <laughs> and it's it's kind of funny, but like the Partridge Family. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. But uh, we'd have to do a lot more. Uh, um, Who's playing drums? I, I don't thing. Know. I don't know. <laughs> But we'd have to do like a lot more research on it because there are a lot of uh, stand soapboxes. Ah, uh, okay. And I, I pumping need to it. Read those. Okay, yeah. well. But that'll be. This is our lead-in for the uh, next episode. Or, smart, James. Which may not be the next. Tune episode. in next time. Yeah, yeah. Boom. So, uh, well, anything else with music? I just wish there was more. I wish there was more <laughs> Paul McCartney writing about Magneto. I wish there was a song I wish about he made a uh, sequel. Yeah, he wrote a song about Iron Man and somebody. Come on, why Magneto? That's what I understand. <laughs> Magneto's cool. <laughs> I hate him. I hate him. What's Titanium Man do? Does he have a power? Uh, he's another guy in a suit. That's all. Of, <laughs> that's. I mean, all of Iron Man's villains are basically the Mandarin or a guy in a suit. That's all. Of them. Every the... last one, <laughs> and then people like people are like, "Why doesn't he? Why couldn't you know?" Oh, I have something to share with the group. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I watched Iron Man three again today. It's at the uh, the second run movie theater, so mm -hmm. I watched it again. I took my mom this time. She pointed out something I hadn't noticed before, um, and I'm speculating here. But if you listen to Ben Kingsley version of uh, the Mandarin, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds exactly like Walter Cronkite. <laughs> Listen to the voice and like close your eyes, and he stole Walter Cronkite's voice and cadence. Huh. Fortune cookies. Yeah, it's interesting. And it sounds just like him. And when she said it, I was like, "Oh my god!" I think Good night. Right. I'm Walter yeah. Cronkite. That's very interesting because I can kind of see that. Yeah, it yeah. really does yeah. sound like Walter Cronkite. It's funny because he's here narrates all that like weird stock footage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really draws you in. Yeah, so. that's a good. That's good. Interesting. Just saying. That's pretty interesting. good. Yeah, we've got a. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, we've got uh, comics since the man of the hour Schaefer is here. Oh, we've got where we will be reading the mighty Thor. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> and and brace yourself. In this one, he te he fights slash teams up another god, Hercules. Oh, oh. there's too much man. Jesus, <laughs> that says that on the comic book. Too much man. Too much man. Yeah, that's what it says. It doesn't say. <laughs> <laughs> now what it says is uh, this is Hercules talking thou hast dared to challenge Hercules and so must die 
<laughs> this one is... Uh, That's why I'd never by, read Thor. It's written by uh, Jerry Conway, <laughs> who was uh, who did Spider-Man in the early 70s. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, John Buscema does the art. He did uh, he did uh, Avengers yeah. around this time, I think. He's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, the art is nice. Yeah. Yeah, John Buscema is really good. Um, also, I just want to point out, and this is everything in pop culture, and you guys can look through it. Um, Hercules. Yeah. Like, there's the movie Hercules, the the Disney movie, like, and it's always the Greek demigod Hercules. No, the Greek demigod is Heracles. Uh, the Roman one is Hercules. Uh, yeah. No. Look it up. You've got to Google right there. Look it up. I will. Here we go. Up. Look it up no, right now. Heracles predated Hercules. They were not the same. <laughs> oh, snap. That's what I just said. No, but they're different people. I just said Hercules is from the Romans. No, I knew this was going to happen. Just look it up. Look it up. There's a Google. There's a Google. You have to do this in front of the guests. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Well, what's funny is that there's there's they're making two Hercules movies, one with The Rock and one with Arnold. No, I'm sorry, Conan. Strike that. God. Strike that. This is uh, the misinformation show. <laughs> I think everything we've said on here is a lie so far. It's a lie. Some people were, some people like have facts about comics. Like, we just make facts, them up. And we just make make we just them make up. Them up. We just make them up. Forget it. Well, there's Wikipedia, as we already stated. It's all right. <laughs> Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about this. Her Heracles. He's wow. Well, they didn't have to put that picture up of him, did they? Oh, they did. Oh dear. Oh shit. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, was I got, right? No, you, oh, you got it snaps. Wrong. Oh. oh, what is it? No, you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh no. Trust me, I do my research. Okay. I use my Wikipedia. Nerd alert. <laughs> Can we cut that part out? It makes you look bad. Uh, no. Nope. I nope. swear, I thought they were the same person or Jesus. different people. Jesus. Different people. Jesus. <laughs> so uh, this. What were you sad. right about? I was right about the it fact. It doesn't that matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're all specks of dust in this vast universe anyway. Uh, we, sorry. Just, we just took a left <laughs> turn there. <laughs> so basically, in this one, Thor is stuck in Olympus. Yada, yada, yada. With a bunch of checks. You know, one of these days, I'm going to have to read one of these comics before <laughs> we start. I always read them after. Like, I like it when yeah. you do it during and there's dead space. <laughs> yeah. Those are really our best. Those you are just, our strongest shows. You just read. <laughs> You just, you just kind of, huh. huh. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. No way. James Iyer reads the funnies. <laughs> ha. To himself. <laughs> it's an audio track of me reading. It. It's not even video. To himself. <laughs> Dennis the Menace. You, you stole my idea for our Ziggy. next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, here we go. Let's uh, read some mail. Okay. The Hammer Strikes. Oh. Uh, that's... That's actually pretty is it? good. Is it? It's strong. It's strong. Is it? It's a masculine. Is it? Dear Jerry and John. By the way, for years I've always called him Gary because it's spelled with a G. Yeah. And it wasn't until like a year ago I was like, wait a minute. Jerry with a G is actually short for Gerald. Oh, yeah. And so there. Hmm. I guess I've been ah. mispronouncing his name my entire life, but it <laughs> just occurred to me one day. So here we go. So if I call him Gary from time to time... My mistake. Right. Dear Jerry and John, you guys really had me going for a while. In fact, I honestly thought I saw Irving Forbush uh, somewhere on page one. It was some <laughs> homecoming, Thor 218, that is. The last Thor I had laid the last Thor I had laid my eyes upon <laughs> was number 161, just a bit over 50 issues and four years ago. Thor in Asgard had just escaped Mingog's attempts at invoking Ragnarok. Those were the good old days. They were the good old days. Uh, at invoking Ragnarok and had humbled the mighty Galactus. Uh -huh. I still believe these stories with their assortment of characters, including Ego, the Recorder, Rigel, and the Wanderers, and fine artwork reign supreme. <laughs> I don't know what made me buy this <laughs> The title, perhaps. It was catchy. The title is Thor Fights Alone. The it mood, is catchy. The mood or, struck me. <laughs> curiosity. 
But whatever the reason, I'm glad I have it now. Good. It seems as though I never left. The plots are just as spectacular and the artwork magnificent. I'm glad Thor is still space bound, as I always felt you guys wrote your best stories away from Earth's in inhibiting presence or out where our imaginations could one run wild. God, this is a long letter. Uh, the Black Stars are indeed a formidable foe, and once again, Sounds I see racist. a good story gra grabbing out at me from the pages. It's a pleasure to know Marvel still has a decent fantasy line to go along with those uh, monster books. I'm not saying Thor 218 was perfect, <laughs> but my but God, kid, go on. But he, any mistakes I found were not in any way detract just detracting from the theme. I'm eagerly I'm eagerly awaiting 219 and wondering why I ever left. Humbly yours, Larry Ross, and he's from Snyder, New York. Uh, this is uh, the editor's response. Oh, okay. Yeesh, yeesh, Larry. <laughs> We're wondering why you ever left, too. If the urge to do so ever again hits you, please write and tell us first. Maybe we can correct whatever it is that's gone awry. Anyway, by now, you should be comfortably hooked again and curious, mm. wait, and curious as I'll get out about the characters introduced since last you visited these hallowed pages. Personages like... <laughs> Hildegard, <laughs> Silas Grant, Krista, and others. Mm. Oh, by the way, Honest Irv was on the page was on page one of Thor 218, but he was hidden beh behind Volstag, and thus couldn't <laughs> be seen. And a good thing too, we hear he was dancing double jig with a crazed troll at the moment. Oh, uh, man, sweet. that was Jesus. a mouthful. Ouch. <laughs> Terrifying. Although uh, I do want to point out, this is '70s Thor, and um, they really, I, they kind of around this part were like the Don Blake stuff and the, um, what's what's her name? She's played by um, Strife. Um, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. Yeah. Her oh, character, uh, like Jane Foster. Jane Foster. Oh, like, yeah. They're kind of, they're not gone, but they're kind of shifting away from that and going more with like Asgard and space stuff at this point. Space is, is hot right now. Which is pretty, which is quite an improvement. It, but I guess they never really do get rid of Don Blake. I don't, but I don't think they ever explain anything about him. It makes no sense. <laughs> Why should they? They shouldn't. Well, Schaefer, would you oh, like to read the got here? One? Dear Roy, Jerry, John, and Jim, tell me, <laughs> whose idea was it to turn Thor into a one-man Star Trek series? <clears throat> I ask because I want to know whom to vote for in the fandom polls next year past few issues of Thor mm. have been some of the best in history of this fine mag, and I implore you to keep Thor and his company in the starship Starjammer <laughs> as much as possible. Odin could appoint, as uh, fated, as a traveling ambassador for Asgard so that Thor could visit all sorts of strange worlds and to spread his culture and learn of others. I am sure you could find a way for him to slip away, occasionally take part in an Avengers business. Special recognition should go to John and Jim for some of the fine artwork. Jim's inking is some of the best in the sci-fi atmosphere of late. Try to make his stay on Thor a bit longer than his permanent one-issue stands on Marvel team-up in Spider-Man. You've got a good thing going in the pages of Thor. Don't blow it, please. Whoa. <laughs> don't, don't disappoint don't me. Don't it up. Screw it up. <laughs> that says, so says Bob Margulis. 215 Ritchie Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio. That's his address. Uh, 45215. <laughs> I do love, I, I still love how they publish the address. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's go beat up the kid. Yeah, what this kid said? Yeah. <laughs> See what Bobby Margolis said? See what the Margolis boy said to, <laughs> to Jerry? <laughs> Believe us, Bob, we don't intend to blow it. <laughs> of course, nobody ever exactly intends to. We don't even intend to do it accidentally. Got that? Really talking Tough about? Tough guy. Uh, we're still talking about Thor, right? Oh, like, yeah. The yeah, the definitely. True Goldilocks won't always be soaring through the spaceways and star jammer. For that, I suggest you actually buy our Star Trek comic that we put out every month. It doesn't say that. Oh. But, uh, but we do plan to keep the great majority of the adventures in the other than Earth settings for quite a while. Oh, you were saying there. Do the space thing. Mm -hmm. And as for Jim Mooney, well, 
His stay on Thor was a bit longer, though not as permanent as we'd hoped. Seems his penciling chores on Ghost Rider and Son of Satan demanded too much of him. But uh, we uh, think you'll agree he's one heck of a replacement. In ever-loving Mike Esposito, Mike's even been surprising us with some ultra-fine work he's been turning out lately, and we knew he was good. Digressing. A few issues ago, we questioned half seriously what the gods of Asgard might talk about at cocktail parties. <laughs> oh, delightful. Since politics and such doesn't exist in the realm eternal, well, our offhand bit of wondering aloud in print inspired the following correspondent to these heights of proretic prose. Mm. Oh, God. Wow. Delightful. Inspiration right there. Who's got this one? Is that I, okay? I, I can't wait to hear this one, actually. Duh. What year is it again? This is 74, I believe. 74. 74. Yeah. Uh, mm, this is cocktail <laughs> parties in Asgard. <laughs> That's how it starts out. Is it really? <laughs> yes, exactly like that. It is easy enough to imagine the Asgardians feasting and drinking wine, ale, or mead, but not having cocktail parties. As for what to talk about, of that, there is no lack. <laughs> Sorry. I got ahead of myself there. There's no lack. The deeds of warriors and heroes, of battles fought, of monsters slain, of adventures in lands wondrous and strange. Who has been to the kingdom of the trolls? Who knows the feeling of a fine blade as it slices through a troll's skull? Who has been to the realm of Mestifo and lived to tell of it? How Thor journeyed to the Golden Star to free his father Odin and all Asgard from their slaves' dungeons. How he entered the Dark Nebula to search for his lady Sif. Perhaps, like the Vikings, the Asgardians would listen to the Skad. <laughs> Tell of deeds done in olden days, or make up riddles for one another to answer, or just do some boasting about their own prowess. I like to play Dungeons and Dragons with that. Yeah, I know. I was about to say, <laughs> I'd have a lot of fun. You would like to play with Leonard Philip Zinna uh, from no, Brooklyn. No, we met you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's from Brooklyn. My plus one mace will <laughs> smite thee. Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> you delightful. Uh, the response is. You know, all of a sudden, this topic fascinates us. Anybody else out there have ideas on what day-to-day -day life in Asgard might be like? You know where to send them. Mm. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Zinna, you've earned yourself a no prize for your little bit of speculation. Oh. Now let's see if your fellow Marvelites can help flesh out, flesh, it says flesh out, the picture and give <laughs> us a notion of what a typical Asgardian day is like. What would Asgardians do during the day when they're not killing? Tell stories. Maybe we'll play parchee. Drink me. I had a delightful bagel this morning. <laughs> oh, let's. They read around. They sit around and read Marvel comics. <laughs> and read the mail. And then write awful letters to the editor. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess it up. Oh, well, this is a nice short one. Dear Marvel. Wow. He doesn't even address them by name. Forget oh. that. Jeez. Dear Marv Marvel. Marv. Marvel. Mm. <laughs> Whatever happened to the God Squad that Ego Prime, as Odin's instrument, created so many issues ago? Also, here's a clipping from a recent Newsweek that seems oh, God. pertinent and might interest you. And, oh, is that is that it? It's a picture of spider -Man. I don't know. It's a stamp. <sighs> Anyway. Stamp, James. Jerry has... What's a stamp? I don't know. What's mail? I, I know uh, what email is. Anyway, that guy's from West Virginia. Um, and his name is Andrew Manis. Good. And <laughs> <here's>, <laughs> let's, let's kick his ass. Uh, anyway, uh, here's what the editor says. Jerry has promised that we will be seeing more of Asgard's young gods at some indefinite time in the future, Andy. But when, we can't say. And thanks for clipping, Mr. M Manus. Mis and thanks for the clipping, Mr. Manus. I think it's Manus. <sighs> Whatever. This, too, rates as a no prize. It's from the obvious Because they couldn't buy Newsweek. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you follow up on your own stuff. <laughs> Uh, let's see. It's from, let's see. It's from the August 20th issue of Newsweek, and it tells a small, and it tells of a small cult in Iceland that has actually 
revived religious worship of Thor, Odin, Loki, and other gods of Asgard. Oh, they're talking about Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not putting you on. Oh, well, just remember, up there in Iceland, these gods are currently under under contract to Marvel and are... <laughs> Jesus, and are forbidden, <laughs> forbidden from performing oh. miracles without first obtaining Stan's written permission. Excelsior. Da, 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 da. Come the land of the ice and snow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, we also have a Stan soapbox, oh. if anyone oh, would want to read that. Well, I'll soapbox. give that to our guest. Yes, oh, there, there we go. go. Knock it out. Stan Soapbox. Well, gang, <laughs> it's the time of year again when our thoughts turn to Joyous Noel. That's French. Mm, wow. And uh, you to so traveled. Oh, all the, all the acquaintances. Do, uh, <laughs> 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 so what better time for you to, for your friendly neighborhood soapboxer to extend his salubrious season's greetings one and to all. That's English. <laughs> and there, by save the price of some of the cards, Merry Xmas to the writers, may their tales be ever great. Merry Xmas to the ed editors, may their deadlines ne'er be late. Mm, that's nice. Merry Xmas to the artists, may their pencils never bust. Merry Xmas to the inkers, may their pen points never rust. Oh. Ooh. Merry Xmas to the colorists, may their hues be ever bright. Merry Xmas to the letterers, may their spelling turn out right. Merry Xmas to the printers. May their presses never cease. Merry Xmas to the engravers. May their unions grant them peace. Oh. Nice. Merry Xmas to our distributor, and his sales be ever growing. And you, the merriest wish, wish of all, you're the one who keeps us going. Excelsior! Yeah. <laughs> Stan. I think uh, I'll. That was nice. That, that was I think nice I'll read that every poem. Christmas. He wasn't even trying. He was. A poem, <laughs> and it was that good. He, he was probably wrote that poem. like 20 years before this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marvel are probably like every year with the same dumb poem. <laughs> Why don't you give us a bonus or something, you cheap bastard? <laughs> Shave your mustache. <laughs> Tired of looking at your face. <laughs> Why don't you share some of that Coke? <laughs> a cola. Or wait. Yeah, a cola. A cola. A cola. <laughs> now, I came across this yeah. in the reading. Uh, why don't you explain uh, Okay, it? well, when you guys were arguing about her, 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 her And who please. won that argument? It was James. It was James. <laughs> this That's that's going to be the title of this episode, James Wins. Nobody nobody wins. It's no. Wikipedia wins. <laughs> who, whose side is Wikipedia on? Ooh. Uh, no one knows. Good, good, oh, good. Tell us about that. Okay, oh, well, while you guys were doing that, I was reading, flipping through this comic. Uh, and came across the ultimate fan club, Foom, Friends of Old Marvel. Foom. And as we, we talked about before, Foom is basically the 70s version of the uh, Mary M Marvel M M M M Marching Society. Mess. Oh, okay. They yeah. tried to make it hip, Friends of old so Marvel. called it Foom. Oh. Fing, fang, boom. <laughs> uh, the name, uh, well, here's a little brief history. Foom, it gave you more in 74 and it's still alive in 75. Foom, the name of the niftiest fan club oh, since Attila's Huns. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Foom, the name of the wildest fan magazine ever. Already in its fourth fan... Oh, sh screw you, whoever wrote this. Phantasmagorical issue with more to come. Foom, say it loud, say it proud. Boom, when you join, you learn the Spider-Man code, and either already in the words, uh, I'm sorry, and others already in the works. You receive a giant 20 by 28 superhero poster by Ooh. Jaunty Jim Steph Sternank, Sternanko himself. You get a fistful of sensational stick-ons of your favorite Marvel stars, stickers, a gold-finished membership card, and it all comes to you in a special surprise envelope that will make you, your postman squint sideways at you for months to come. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Gold. Matter, uh, matter Golden of, envelopes. <laughs> what is this? These kids turned to Satan. Matter of fact, the several issues subscription to Foom Magazine alone is well worth the price since you'll learn advanced news items about the latest Marvel masterpieces. Mm. You'll see Raps... Scallions. Raps <laughs> no. Rapsidio advanced reproductions of our Spock... 
practice <laughs> of our epoch making covers, and you'll learn undreamed of secrets behind Marvel. All this and more in each issue. To sum up, we think it might be a singular. <laughs> That'll teach you not to pay attention yeah. while James and I are arguing. <laughs> <laughs> to your advantage to invest two bills and some change to become officially what you already are, in fact, of. In fact, a friend of old Marvel. <laughs> so what are you waiting for? Our hard sell? 250 and you send this little thing in to New York. $2. 250 250 Nickel, it gets you in a movie theater. <laughs> no. Uh, bread? Uh, that's like eight loaves of bread. <laughs> I, I, I'm confused. What? Why is it friends of old Marvel? Are they already getting nostalgic? It's even old, old, old Marvel. Marvel. Like, old Marvel. I like our old pal Marvel. Oh, We're going to the old saloon old for some drinks, and then down to the the girly club. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later we'll get some girly magazines. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, whoever says you can't learn, kids can't learn anything from comics. Never read that ad because that's some serious vocabulary. There. Yeah, it is. And kids probably just read right over it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they would have read w right over it and got to the part where Thor and Hercules were beating each other up. <laughs> or wrestling around on the ground with their shirts off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we were talking about movies earlier, Schaefer, and we talked. You saw Iron Man three. We never did get your oh, yeah. two cents on. Yeah, that. we'd like to hear what you think of all the movies because we all the movies ever oh, made in the history of the world. We, we haven't shut up about. We have time. It. Yeah, we've, we've got, got we got a few minutes. I I really like Iron Man three. I think it's probably my favorite movie that came out this mm -hmm. summer. Uh, not to ruin anything, but uh, I think you can say some people were disappointed with the way that. Uh, Ben Kingsley's character was treated. Spoiler alert. They thought uh, he might have deserved more, but uh, I really like it. I thought it was funny. I mean, it's not the Mandarin, but... Yeah, but... what? <laughs> go, go read the Mandarin. Yeah. I mean, go read it. Yeah. I mean, it's classic, but do you really want to see a movie adaptation of such a mustache-twirling character? Well, they did, they did something different. Yeah. I mean... I mean, they took it a different way. Yeah. I'm not going to defend Guy Pierce blowing fire, but... I thought it was a good I thought movie. that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like when he blew fire. You didn't fire. like when he blew fire? <laughs> do you like dragons? <laughs> no, I, I you did like dragons. I do like for... dragons. Thank you. Everyone likes nice. dragons. <laughs> I like uh, Imagine Dragons. <laughs> uh, Star what? Trek, what do you think of that? Also, yeah, it's, it's crazy how many good movies come out mm -hmm. in the summer. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, like, they really perfected the... Uh, the uh, formula, you know, we don't have movies like Daredevil coming out, Fantastic Four, the well, bygone that, days. Remember when we used to think The Mummy was good? Yeah, we were like, oh, The Mummy, what <laughs> the an mummy. action movie. Wow. Ew. You guys didn't like that? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like The Mummy. By today's standards. But so, he, I think, yeah. by, I think we, what he was trying to say is that we were just so dry. Like, that movie came out in 97. We were just so dry for, like, a, a swashbuckling action adventure movie that... Our standards were lower, and now, like each summer, you'll come out with five good movies. Right, like they really too much. The, it is, <laughs> it is. But it, I keep shelling out money for it, and it's quality entertainment. Star Trek was great. Um, I'm not a, a, as big a fan of the new Star Trek because it makes Star Trek fun. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I, I it liked it better when now. Star Trek was <laughs> obscure and. You had to be weird to like it. I like when I could fall asleep during the show. Yeah. I don't like the staying awake stuff. But no, it had really good actors. Uh, Benedict Cumberpatch. Great. Great villain. And I also like saying Benedict Cumberpatch. It sounds like an adult film star. It does it, does. though? Yeah. It does. Cumberpatch. <laughs> Alyssa Cumberpatch. Yeah. You know, he has, a, with this, uh, he has a female fan club. Oh, God. The Cumber Bitches. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I... See, I thought they would have been called, the fan club would have been called the uh, Cumber Snatch. <laughs> That's actually way better. Somebody, let's shoot them an email after we yeah, get yeah, the show. Yeah, I will. The Cumber Snatch. I will. You Cumber guys Snatches? should have called yourselves the Cumber Snatch. Why not? I was going to go with more medical terms. <laughs> the Cumber Vag. <laughs> that is a medical term. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Did you get to see the <laughs> conversation? Oh, uh, God. Speaking of snatch, did you get to see the Wolverine? 
No, yeah. Uh, Yo, know, James and I are going back and forth about this offline. Uh, Wolverine's your favorite movie this summer, right, James? I think. Well, it's a tough choice between that and Iron Man. I think. I think Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, well, it's hard to say. It's pretty close because Wolverine is like a classic movie. I really like the direction they're going. Uh, there were only three mutants in the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't have two. The cast of character was so small. You didn't have to get up on Wikipedia to figure out who was the person running through the background in scene seven. I was like, oh, that's a weird mutant, and uh, no one knows. But uh, yeah, they made a they made a uh, good samurai movie with Wolverine in it, and it was. You didn't have to know a lot about X Men to enjoy the movie, I thought. Yeah. Um, also, you told me this, and I didn't. I didn't even recognize. I've seen some movies that this guy was in, but uh, the father, who was one, of, he was the guy behind the um, not the grandfather, but the father, the guy who was behind the yakuza. Um, yeah. He's a big Wasn't movie star. Yakuza. Yeah, Hiroyuki Sonata. Um, some people might recognize him. Uh, <laughs> most recently, he was on uh, Lost. He played uh, the person who lived in the temple in the last season of Lost. Yeah. But I've known him for a long time because I uh, I'm a fan of Japanese movies, and he was actually an action star in the '80s. He was in Sonny Chiba's uh, martial arts troupe mm -hmm. and uh, starred in a lot of movies with Sonny Chiba. When Sonny Chiba got older. He would bring in Hiroyuki Sonata as kind of the lead, and then Sonny Chiba would play the bad guy yeah. in several movies. But I'll never forget him. Back then, he was billed in the States as Henry Sonata. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll never forget, uh, one of my favorites is uh, Shogun's Ninja. Uh, he was in with Sonny Chiba, and uh, it, confusingly, Sonny Chiba was named Shogun, but there was a character there, that was actually the Shogun in that movie. But anyway, I, really I digress. <laughs> uh, Hiroki Sonata played a ninja prince, and uh, he gets really sad when his mentor dies, and they ha there's oh. a really weird jazz scene where he does an interpretive dance over a fire, and they're playing, like, <laughs> acid jazz. And then, like, he's jumping over the fire and, like, like doing dance, but then, like, some karate kicks, and they're playing. It's it's worth watching. I'll What's it called it. again? Shogun's Ninja. Shogun's. I watch it tonight. We'll you put heard a link. it here. Yeah, we'll put a link on it. Uh, but once you see that, it. It, he's a great actor, and he's a great um, uh, martial artist. But once you see that, you'll never quite look at him the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say he was shirtless? Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Jumping over the fire. <laughs> So, uh, Man of Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of shirt, Henry was. Cavill. <laughs> yeah. What'd you think of that movie? Oh, I, I liked it. Yeah. It, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> good. Locked it. Locked it. <laughs> it, had a lock beat. it. It had a beat. I could dance to it. <laughs> well, what did you think of Man of Steel? Did you guys already beat we, that? Yeah, we yeah. talked about it. Um, okay. Are you not listening to our podcast? Yeah, I missed deal, that one. Man. Uh, I missed that one. Uh, it's um, over. It's over. Stop. I didn't. It was probably my least favorite, uh, but it's kind of the same thing. A lot of it is the same thing with uh, you and Star Trek, and I kind of yeah. explained that on the show. And now I'm a big fan of the Star Trek show. Yeah. But. Um, for me, I was always like a big fan of Superman, and seeing this interpretation, while like I don't mind them changing plots and stuff, like you yeah. got to do that, but like they really changed the mood, they made it very dark, and I didn't really dig that. However, I will say this, and going back to Star Trek, um, since Star Trek, I mean Star Trek got me into watching the old show. Yeah. If Man of Steel gets someone excited yeah. enough to go back and read the old books. It did its job. Introduces a new generation. Yeah, it did its job. Yeah. I think they'll be disappointed, though. My, yeah. Like you said, they changed the tone. Of, everyone's complaining that they're changing the tone of the character. I wasn't character. disappointed when I saw old Star Trek. Yeah. I mean. I was. Like, <laughs> well, it's it's. I mean, it's if a, it gets you into it, it gets yeah. you into it. I, I like the super the Man of Steel movie because it was different from the old Superman. It was. That's why I didn't. Like see, it. that's why I did like it because I never was a huge fan of Superman because he was the Boy Scout, and he was always you know, just because of the Boy Scout. I don't, I don't like characters like that. I kind of like yeah. your darker. Um, but he is. He's still. I, I know you Boy need Scout that, but that's. No, I, I know you need that, but I I don't. No. He's there. For a reason, and I don't care. Now I'll, I'll challenge that. I'll say he was challenge it. He wasn't a Boy Scout in the movie. Mm. I think he kind of played by his own rules. Really? No, that's I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he was a Boy Scout at all. Okay. And I'm glad he yeah. wasn't. I liked him more me. for it. <laughs> yeah. If Superman sees me, and he just yeah. zooms by because he's fighting some dude, 
I'm cool. Yeah, I will <laughs> say I wasn't a big fan of them destroying Metropolis. That was kind of weird. It was dark, and I think, I think Zack Snyder. Well, more I'll call Christopher Nolan on out on this. Like, they're great. You're an expert. Like, they're great. People. No, they're great, <laughs> great people. Yeah. Okay, great you artists. Know them. <laughs> but I think they're afraid, almost afraid, to have any kind of humor or like lightheartedness in their movie. Or maybe they're just not good at it. I don't know. It's it's a crutch, but I think almost like the the glo- doom and gloom and seriousness and. Uh, it's really taken over DC, which yeah. is funny because Marvel has gone totally away from that, yeah. and they're doing just fine over there. Yeah. yeah, they can crack jokes. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. So I don't know. Like the the end of Iron Man three is like the the post epilogue is nothing like previewing the next movie. It's just, it's a, just a funny, funny bit between yeah. the Hulk and Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. I felt robbed there too. No, you didn't. I want to see Thanos. <laughs> I want to see the Hulk. I want to see the Hulk. Not pretty boy. What's his name? It, I, I want the. Uh, I want. A, I wanted the movie. <laughs> Mark Ruffalo Mark is a Ruffalo pretty boy. Is, he's just very me. handsome. Is that where you're going? With yeah. That? I just wanted. I just wanted it to be. Uh, th- the end of Iron Man three just to be Thanos laughing some more. Like it's not it's like the same camera angle. <laughs> Court death, I get it now. <laughs> Cause you know in that comic book from the nineties where I literally did that. <laughs> and it goes back to black. Just, yeah. that's it. <laughs> and then the movie Still audience laughing. is like, Oh now I do get it. <laughs> uh. Uh. Uh, so but yeah, I think I mean, that's why I'm excited for Ant Man because it seems like it's going to be a fun, it's going to be a fun movie. It's not going to be too serious. Yeah, Our, I'm. What's <laughs> Ant Man's going to be a fun? What's Guardians of the Galaxy going to be bizarre? Jeez, uh, I think that's going to be bizarre. I just you, read that Vin Diesel's seen, in it now. Have you seen that movie that that guy directed, the uh, Super? Did we talk? No, we, we, talked, we talked about, about with Rain Reggie Wilson. Show, yeah. 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 yeah, no, I haven't seen it yet. Jeez. It's something. Yeah. It, I, did you watch it? No, my wife saw it. She, yeah, uh, she did. told me the plot on the phone, so I'm probably going to skip it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should watch it. it I'm going to watch it. Yeah. it. Yeah. You're not well, going to watch it. <laughs> it. I can't say it's a good movie. Because you don't know. There you go. How to make it. <laughs> that's, that's, it's not a good movie. <laughs> well, it's not go. a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know we're all going to go see Guardians. It didn't feel bad. Well, we'll see it. Yeah, we'll see it. Didn't feel bad. Didn't feel bad. Did it make you feel good about it after watching it? (laughs) That movie made you feel good about it, didn't you? (laughs) Oh. Oh. (laughs) Let's stare at each other for a minute. (laughs) It's clear the air. Are there any good ads in this one? What are the ads from 74 like? Oh, there's a... I th- they're the same this, ones from the 60s. Is it, do they <laughs> realize there's a bad idea to sell monkeys on, on here? No, it's yet. the same ads. They use really? those same ads for... Some of them are from the 40s, even. They just kept using them. Oh, jeez. Uh, there like, must be a better way to earn a living. What is that an ad for? I don't know. It's got a handsome man and a weird woman looking we'll at him. We'll never be poor again. Do <laughs> I still want the these ads aren't good. What are you talking about? Too skinny? <laughs> <laughs> nope. New scientific discovery helps you put on weight. I, by the way, I love that how like in the <laughs> old days, like like mag- magazines catered to dorks was a, they always had ads to get you in shape, and it's too skinny. And nowadays, it's too fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-powered muscles fast. Yeah. Game warden. <laughs> How to be a game warden? Opportunities in your state. It shows a man next to a mountain lion. <laughs> Ever wanted to marry somebody? <laughs> I, was, I was married to a catamount. <laughs> there you go. Here's Good that. cook. <laughs> Good cook. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I like 
like this ad. I think we've seen this before, but never finished high school? <laughs> now you can get a diploma without going back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've always wanted. The reward without the effort. You send me $20, I'll send you a diploma. <laughs> you already know why it's important to have a high school education. You've probably learned the hard way that it can be pretty difficult to get the kind of job you want without one, no matter how hard you're willing to work. What can you do about it? Maybe you've thought of trying again to get a diploma. Yeah, to get a diploma. You've, you've suffered enough <laughs> classroom battle fatigue to last you a lifetime. So, like, this guy just, like, GDs. sleeps in school yeah. all day, and he's like, why can't I get a diploma? <laughs> This is hard. Is advertising what this, a GED is now? Yeah. Uh, let I'm me sorry. skip ahead. It might be. That's that's the unique Wayne School way. Wayne School. <laughs> Wayne School. Oh, uni- like Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> is it Bruce Wayne that wrote this? No. Ah. Wayne High. You I go to do Bruce Wayne your school. reading and assignments in your spare time. Oh, it's, oh, just, well, like, oh. it's just like National American University. Yeah. Ah. Saturdays are all right. Yeah. Yeah. What about Saturdays? Sundays. I love how like there's always a way to like <laughs> rope in rope people. In really lazy people yeah. who want uh. a nice job with no effort. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to do this math essay, but I just don't have the time. I don't, yeah. <laughs> it's hard. What am I gonna sleep? If you're 17 or over and not now in school, not why now not send for I know, not now in school. <laughs> This, yeah. Get a diploma here. <laughs> it gets you good learning. Learn how to uh, t- type good. And learn how, learn how to good typing skills. Uh, mail. Holy shit! There's another one. Okay, I'm I'm not kidding. This mail is, really is spelled M A L E. If you're 17 or over and not now in school, why not send for more information? <laughs> mail mail coupon for free booklet. What? <laughs> I don't what mail coupon for free booklet. <laughs> well, all right. If not now in school, why not mail coupon for free booklet? What? Where does it where that do you mail it to? Of, where do you mail it to? Uh you mail it to uh the Wayne School, a the leader Wayne in school. home study. At 417 South Dearborn Street in Chicago, Illinois. Ah, Please Chicago. Please rush me your free illustrated up. booklet. Do it <laughs> now, high James. School at home, containing uh-huh. a full information about your courses. Is that the address? Yeah, I just said it. 417 South mail Dearborn it. Street. 417 South Dearborn. Dearborn Street. Street. Thank Chicago, you. Illinois. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're just writing it down. <laughs> oh, for for research. For a friend. Yeah. For, it's for, for a friend. For a friend. For I friend. have a friend. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me uh, My friend's lazy. of an older ad they had in the 60s. Uh, I had a guy, it was a guy holding like spectacles up and he was like, shamed by your English? <laughs> you know what's funny is you cut you cut that out of one of them yeah. and put them on my desk at work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought, I am shamed by my English. <laughs> yeah, it was another uh, tele, telecourse, some kind of thing. Gross. That's just gross. Weird. Spooky. Well, I guess Spooky. for the longest time, people have been uh, taking advantage of, <laughs> of uh, lazy people. <laughs> yep. They always will. Well, I think that about wraps it up. No, uh, thanks for having me back, guys. Yeah, thank thank you. you. I hope you never come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We are glad to have you back. Um, and we'll try to have this posted with some links. And uh, take it easy. Have a good day.